Hey guys, my name is Biora. This is going to be the first video in a series of videos where I'm going to try to take you all the way from if you've never used Python at all, you've never coded ever, all the way to learning how to grab solo queue data from the Riot API and work with that data in order to learn new things. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install Python. To do that, I'm going to go to my browser. I'm going to Google Python. And just for anyone curious, I'm running this all in a virtual machine. So everything looks very fresh. Um, it's just so that I can make sure that I'm having the same experience that you guys are likely going to have if you've never done this before. So I'm going to click this here, download Python 3.12.1. It's going to download that here. I'm going to click open file. And we're going to install that. Now it's very important. You pay attention. You need to click this here, add python.exe to path. Don't worry about customizing your installation. Anything that would be in there, if you've never done any of this before, is not really relevant to you right now. You might be able to do that in the future, but for now, we're gonna click install now. It's gonna install that here. It might take a bit. Cool, and again, we're gonna wanna pay attention. We're gonna disable our path length limit. It allows us to add more things to path. Click yes. And then we're done. We could close. We're going to go back. And now we're also going to install something called Visual Studio Code, which is going to be where we're going to actually do our coding in. This is our IDE, Visual Studio Code. Enable that. We're going to click download here. It's going to take us to the VS Code download section. I'm using Windows right now on this virtual machine. Um, so click whatever is appropriate for you. I'm going to install this. It's going to start downloading up at the top here. Cool. Once that is finished downloading, we're going to click open file. We're going to start installing this. I accept the agreement. Get rid of that. Uh, don't worry about anything here. Don't don't click anything. Don't unclick anything. We're going to install. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to now launch Visual Studio Code. This is what it looks like. If you want to change the theme, you can do that here. Or if you want to, I don't know, I guess mess with any of these things here. I'm not really going to worry about that. I'm going to get rid of this welcome thing and we're going to go to the Explorer. So the Explorer is where your kind of file tree is going to exist. This is where your workspace is going to be. So to access that, I'm going to essentially just create a new folder here and we're going to call it workspace. This is going to be our workspace for today for this project. And I'm going to click open folder. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to open workspace. Here we go. Cool. Yes, I trust the authors because I am the author. Right. So in here, uh, before we do anything, we're going to actually want to go to our extensions. And we're going to want to install Python. Extensions are cool. Uh, it's one of the unique things about VS Code, which is a way to essentially add on to your environment to add new things that people have developed to, you know, assist you in whatever you need to do. There's a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And they have all kinds of different extensions for different things. So we have Python. We're going to also need Jupyter. So I'm going to install that as well. I wonder what else they have in here. Okay, so we have Python, we have Jupyter. We're done with the extensions for now. I'm gonna go into my workspace. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna show you guys something important, which is we're gonna right click this space here. We're gonna to go to open in integrated terminal and we're going to create what is called a virtual environment. So a virtual environment is basically a place where we can store the packages that we're gonna use for our project so that we don't have to always use all of our packages every time. And a way that I like to explain this to new coders is imagine you're cooking dinner, right? And maybe you make um, like spaghetti and meatballs, right? Something very simple. You get out your pasta, you get out um, your ground beef, you get out your pots and pans, maybe your spices, you make your sauce, etc., right? and you make it uh, and then a few days later you run out and you say i actually kind of want to make it again right wouldn't it be easier if instead of having to go through your entire pantry your entire kitchen and grab everything that you need wouldn't it be easier if you just had that stuff available for you 
So that is kind of what virtual environments are. It's like a, a small pantry that you create just for the specific project that you're working on. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create one. So the way you do that is you type in Python dash M VENV, which stands for virtual environment VENV. And we're gonna name it VENV. You can name this kind of anything, but industry standard is VENV or dot VENV. And hit enter and it should throw me an error. And it will say Python was not found. This is something that will happen for a lot of people when they're starting this for the first time. And that is because you need to restart your PC after you add Python to the, your path, uh, path line in your environment variables. I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So when you add something to your environment variables, if I type in environment variables and click this button down here, it'll show up in your path here. So path variable in this line, it'll add Python and Python scripts. That's good. That's what we wanted. And if it's not here, you need to add this. Okay. In the user section specifically, uh, I'm just showing you this. You don't have to actually do anything here, but you hit okay. And I'm going to restart my PC. And then when I restart it, it will have like actually put that in there and recognized it. So then we will actually be able to use Python from this terminal. So I'm going to do that. I'll see you in a bit. Great. So I have restarted my virtual machine here. I'm going to go back to visual studio code. Uh, Visual Studio Code, click that. We're gonna open up this again, and we're gonna try it again. So back into our terminal, right click this space here, open an integrated terminal. And I'm going to now type Python dash M V E N V, and we're gonna name it V E N V. There you go. You could see it up left here. It's being created, right? And this is like a little loading symbol here to let you know that your task is being run. So there you go. The, the virtual environment has been created. I'm going to create a uh, new folder here. We're going to call this learning. Um, actually, I don't need to really do that right now, but I'll, I'll use it later. Um, I'm going to have to activate this virtual environment. So to do that, I'm going to have to type venv backslash scripts, capital S script backslash activate. And this should also throw an error, right? Because I have not actually activated the ability to run scripts on my computer. Now, if you see this, the first thing you're going to want to do, if you ever are not like using a tutorial is you're going to want to basically just copy this, go to your browser. This is, I mean, every, every person who does code does this, by the way, don't worry about feeling like you're cheating. You just Google that error message and you'll come to a place called stack overflow. This is going to be your holy grail when it comes to any kind of coding stuff ever. So what it says to do to fix this error is you open PowerShell and you run as administrator and you type in set execution policy, yada, 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 remote signed. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look up our PowerShell right click. We're going to run as administrator. Yes. Here we go. We have our PowerShell here. This is basically a terminal, just a different kind of terminal. Um, and we'll do set execution policy dash execution policy remote signed hit enter. And then it should prompt us for a yes or no. I'm going to hit yes. And there you go. It is completed, which means we can now activate our virtual environment. I'm going to do that by pressing the up key. Just basically this grabs the last thing you typed. Okay. So you don't have to type it again, hit enter. And now our virtual environment is active. You could tell because this has, you know, a little green V E N V on the side here. Um, now our virtual environment comes pre-stocked with something in the pantry, which is pip pip allows us to um, install other packages. So pip is a package that allows you to install other packages. So I'm going to do pip install. And the first thing we're going to install is IPY kernel. This will allow us to use Jupyter notebooks. Uh, in order to use Jupyter notebooks, you need something that will allow your, um, your visual studio to interact with the kernel that you're or something like that. I don't know. It has to do with kernels, uh, kernel in this case being the virtual environment that we're running in. So that is going to install, uh, it takes kind of a long time, but you saw it was kind of installing the, all these folders here. This is all from 
IPy kernel and it's adding more as it goes. Uh, and then once we do that, we're going to create a, actually we can just start doing it now, it's done. Okay, cool. So in our learning folder, we're gonna create a new file. So we're going to create a new file. This is gonna be called sandbox.ipy notebook. And in the top right, you can see it says detecting kernels. That is basically it's saying it's trying to detect what language it should use. In this case, we're gonna go Python environments. And we're gonna to go to our virtual environment here. VENV, Python 3.12.1. This is our virtual environment, which comes stock with, we're gonna hit allow, comes stock with our IPy kernel package, which allows us to run this cell. So let's try it. We're gonna type print parentheses, quotes, hello world. Oh, sorry. And we're going to do shift enter. You can also click the little play button here or run all or any of these, etc. But I'm going to use shift enter because that will, that's the hotkey for running a cell. So I'm going to run. There you go. It has ran. It ran in 0.0, .0 seconds and it says hello world. I can do some other things too. If I want to do like one plus two shift enter is three there you go right so there's a bunch of stuff you can do with python you can go into that in the future also i'm just going to turn on auto save before i forget there you go so that is how to get python up and running how to establish a virtual environment which is a good practice for you know creating kind of a smaller set of packages this way you don't have to always use your full kitchen you can just use the packages that you want to use for this project it also makes it easier for when you want to um you know, release this project, maybe on GitHub to allow other people to use it. This way you don't have to add your entire kitchen into the project, just the stuff that you need, right? So it saves on disk space, etc. cetera. Uh, cool, next video, I'm gonna be talking about credentials, how to get your Google credentials, which you'll eventually need later, how to get your Rye API key, et cetera, and how to store them in a safe way so that no one can um, access them without your without basically being on your local PC, unless you reveal them via some other means. So there you go. I'll see you next video.